telling me that you wrote speeches for some sort of political rally? Well, so a friend of mine I met this past summer, his name is Sam Rye, he emailed me to uh, just see if I could help him with his campaign. He's trying to become a city councilman in the city of Clarkston, Georgia. So I put together a 30-minute, a 2-minute, and a 5-minute speech for him. And he's going to use them when he speaks to the public? It, I think so. I, he, he has a pretty active Facebook presence, and I've already seen him uh, using some of the lines that I put together. Uh, uh, all about the uh, helping weave people into the beautiful diversity that is Clarkston. And okay. it, was, it was pretty kind of cool. I've never seen like my words actually in somebody else's uh, usage. It was pretty fun to kind of see how that was going. Here's the important thing. Did you quote what's the res in the speech? Of course not. Of I did not quote not. what's the res. The point is to get Sam elected, not to plug our show. <laughs> all right. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Ethan Delves and Josh Herring coming back with another episode. Today, we're going to be talking about world school debate and what exactly this format is, how it works. We're going to break it down for you and kind of go through some of our thoughts about this new format that we're about to try. I'm pretty excited about this one. I, I found it last summer and when I was looking for some kind of international competition, and I discovered the Heart of Europe International Debating Competition in Czechia, yeah. uh, which, formerly known as the uh, Czech Republic, and a little bit formerly, even further back, the uh, part of Czechoslovakia, but they're now Czechia, so... When did that happen? They were, the, they were Czechoslovakia when I was in high school, and they were the Czech Republic up until last year, so... I like Czech Republic the best. It, it, I, I, I like Czechia seems to kind of stick with me. I, I like it. it Sounds it like works. a Disney movie kind of land to me. <laughs> well, maybe the, the pictures of Alamuk look amazing. I'm probably wait. butchering the pronunciation there, but... But yeah, so there's a World School Debate Tournament happening in Czechia. It's an international debate tournament, so students from all over the world are going to be competing in the World School Debate format, so it's fitting. I think in uh, 2018, there were 42 countries represented, but there was not an American team that year. So... Do you think next year we're going to be the first American team? We won't be the first American team in that competition. There, there have been others before us, but at least the year on uh, that okay. that year on their side, I looked through. They had a they had just like a, a posting of all the flags of the country. It's like where's where's the American flag? Nope, no American. Oh, we should definitely oh, we have go. to represent. We have to represent. <laughs> we do. Okay. And uh, so part of what they do then is it's world style, which is I thought was fascinating. There's an international debating community. Like it's it's even above. I mean we've. We've explored a little bit with local debate and some of the national debate through the Coolidge Tournament and joining the NSDA, but there's a whole other world out there. We can kind of explore it next year. Yeah, and do you know where it came from? Because this is kind of, I've never heard of world school debate, not to do the appeal to ignorance kind of thing, but well, um, I, it's new to me, you know? I just yeah, found about it last the, so I, I've been digging into this just a tad, and I, I think I understand it, but I might be wrong. We may be back a few episodes later with a correction to some of this, but my understanding is that this really grows out of British parliamentary debate. And British parliamentary debate is itself a uh, really a result of the habits of debate that grew in British, the British Parliament. And so that this is a product of the British Empire that uh, used to basically run large portions of the world. You know the famous line, the sun never set on the British Empire? Yeah, I know that line. That, 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 this is, I think, a remnant of that because a lot of the countries that do a lot of British parliamentary debate, uh, there used to be British colonies. But British, par British parliamentary debate is it, it has a it, greater emphasis on style than on content, and it has a great it uses English as the language of international competition, which is certainly helpful to me because I and only me. speak yeah. English. Uh, I, I feel quite ignorant when I meet my friends who have three or four languages, and they can they can move back and forth interchangeably. I I, I am stuck with just English. Uh, For the which, time being, I am as well because my, my entire family speaks Spanish and I'm still working my way up there. So, uh, Mrs. Herring has told me several times that if we ever do make it down to Puerto Rico, I should just assume that I am always being made fun of by her family oh, when they're speaking in Spanish. Me, from what I can understand from Spanish when I go there, I am I know how that feels. Like I, People are just talking all the time. It's hard to understand. So you've got British parliamentary debate and then the style of worlds that I was looking into at the Czechia tournament it grew out it was developed or formalized by an Austrian philosopher named Karl Popper in the middle 20th century Hmm. Uh, he wrote several books. I actually found a couple of his books at a used bookstore in Asheville this last summer. I was like, oh, Karl Popper, the debate guy. Okay. Oh, Karl Popper, the philosophy guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, uh, so this is really formal. We had a philosopher backing us and everything. Well, he uh, uh, on a side note, apparently Karl Popper uh, is not a huge fan of Plato. He thinks Plato like ruined Western philosophy from that point on. So what what was there even before Plato to go off of and ruin it? The oh, the pre-Socratics. Yeah. So he's a pre-Socratics guy. I'm not sure. I haven't actually read much beyond the first chapter. I was like, oh, and then life got busy. Hmm. So. Uh, I think that's really what we're looking at. It's a kind of debate that has grown up over the last uh, really 100 to 50 to 10 years as an international debate competition that happens in uh, happens in English, and there are lots of local teams that compete in their regional circuits and national circuits, but then there's an international world's community. So well, I, I, mean, I did I did find that podcast I think I sent you. I don't did you listen to have you listened to any of it yet? No, not yet. I've not oh. heard it yet. It's uh, uh, something about debating with Nina and Kyle, and on, on some odd circumstances, they happen to listen to it. I should mention, they, are, they have a great podcast. I really enjoyed listening to that. I need to get to that on this long weekend, for sure. Uh, that'd be good, because they, uh, they're, they're two uh, Philippine students, if I put their background together correctly, who debated in world's format, or British parliamentary format is their particular brand of that. Throughout high school, they're now students at a Philippine university, and they're, they're, they started this podcast as a kind of a coaching aid. And in there, they, they give out so many great paradigms, and they explain all the pieces and the roles and the way it works. And I think it's very similar to the way world style works. I'm pretty sure world style is an attempt to just further uh, diversify or have a, have a very uniform version of a British parliamentary debate. Yeah, and I'm completely new to this format again but from what i've seen from it it looks really interesting and i think there's one thing that caught my eye in particular which is the point of information because you did talk about this thing called point of order a while ago mm-hmm. you remember when there's new information in parliamentary debate and then in the british parliament that would scream out point of order or something yep, yep. That, that tradition so i see another point of tradition translating over to world school debate. yeah there's a so world school has this kind of cool format where you have two teams of three to five people or this is at least particularly the uh, National Speech and Debate Association's USA World Schools debate uh, manual's description of how it works. So this may just be the United States version of World School, but I think it's pretty pretty uh, universal. Where you have three to five people on a team, but then three people deliver each deliver a constructive t- speech of eight minutes in length, alternating between sides. Your two sides are called, on the one hand, you have the, the pro team or the proposition, and then you have the op or the opposition team, where those, those labels are drawn from one team is proposing some kind of legislation or some kind of uh, resolution of some sort. The other team is opposing it. Coming from that classic uh, parliamentary tradition of uh, her one side, the, the government proposes a bill, but the bill in parliament had to be opposed. And But the people who oppose it are not opposing Her Majesty or His Majesty's government. Instead, they are His Majesty's loyal opposition. They are opposing the bill so as to produce the best possible bill through this whole process. And one of those cool things about the resolutions that you were just talking about is that half of them, you said, are predetermined. So you'll have half of them. But then there's another half that's impromptu. And well, spot, before we get right? there, let's, let's, let's finish up the point of order part because that that's tied to the, the speaking order. Okay. Because the when you have so there in this style of debate you have you don't have um, you don't really have prep time uh, as much you also don't have cross examination is the main thing you don't have and then so in order to get your questions in you stand and you you indicate that you want to have a point of information and then you can ask the speaker a question in the middle of the speech. So no, that's, that's that's how point of information different. work. It's a lot different from LD. Could could you imagine being in the middle of your speech and suddenly someone interrupts you and interrupts your train of thought? Yeah, and it says that you are advised not to do this, at least in the NSDA's manual, more than once every twenty seconds. Uh, once every 30 seconds or 40 or even every minute would still be just as bad. It's definitely going to be an adjustment period and getting used to it because sure. that would be really annoying. To just have well, people... And I'm sure there's a strategy involved Exactly, there. like well, just keep asking questions and they get distracted, you know? Well, and, and, but of course, I, I, I could imagine a judge looking and thinking, wow, the opposition team was really abusive to the, pro te- the proposition team because they asked so many questions. So I'm sure there's a balance in how many questions you ask, when you try to ask questions, and what kind of questions do you want to ask in that format? Yep, I agree. Okay. Uh, you were asking about something else a minute ago. What the two was... types of resolutions. That's right. So normally in our, our resolutions, we get them uh, anywhere from four to six weeks ahead of a competition. Uh, for 
This style of debate, you get half of the resolutions that will be treated at a tournament uh, within a month of the tournament, I believe. The other half are released the day of the tournament uh, within either 30 minutes or an hour. I, I've seen different tournaments arrange it a little bit differently, but there's 30 minutes to an hour before the round you get the resolution. And you and your team, go. you get uh, a private room, pe uh, plenty of paper, pens and pencils, and a single volume dictionary encyclopedia. No electronic resources, no Google, no JSTOR, no Hein Online, no... But that's so nice. That's so nice. Because, again, you were just talking about that traditional and format and delivery style rather than extremely content heavy. It's one thing to note that a lot of the resolutions are really current events oriented topics. So reading the news consistently every day would do you well. And if you go to the, um, the website for that international competi competition that's being held in Czechia, you can actually find all the old resolutions from the year before. We were reading through some of those before. But I think it's a really nice thing that you don't necessarily need to do tons of research or tons of preparation on those resolutions that are more impromptu because it's, there's something nice about doing debate on the spot and really putting your skills to the test and your impromptu debate skills to the test as well. What do you think? Uh, I think it's really fun. I mean, I think it, it forces you to think on your feet. It forces you to bring a lot of background knowledge to bear. And it really forces you to really uh, to get out of the particular resources that you and your team might have. So it's less about research skill and it's more about debate skill. It really is. Though at the same time, we watched a, a video in class last week see it looking at a, a world school debate from 2018. It's not just a free-for-all because, of course, you still have to – you need to be very widely read and you need to oh, understand yeah. some of the major paradigms uh, of thought that, that come into play. And especially as you get into uh, – one of the things I also thought was interesting about this is that this gets into different social territory than our typical policy-oriented or economics-oriented debate. Definitely, yeah. So part of that then means that you've got to know a lot about these different social movements. So it's a, I mean, that's again, like a consistent research type of thing. And it's a, I would even call it like a daily discipline. If you really want to be able to do good in this type of debate or do well in this type of debate, you need to know major historical events, possibly, mm -hmm. and current events like social problems and issues that are being But raised. also be able to treat those, uh, one thing that both the NSDA manual and the uh, Heart of Europe tournament emphasize is you've got to be able to rise above your own national perspective. I think in, in a lot of our resolutions, uh, our, we have a current one where the state of North Carolina is the active agent. The U.S. federal government is a standard agent in our debates. Uh, but in this case, we're talking if we're truly doing world style, we've got to consider this from an international perspective, uh, which may mean viewing this from a different nationality's point of view. How will how will this affect Venezuela? How will this affect Australia or New Zealand or China or Japan? Or see it, how does this affect from truly the international community's perspective? How will this affect the globe? It really forces you to kind of transcend those really stuck down thoughts that you have, just whether it's based on where you live or in your nation or the typical kinds of debate that you're used to doing. And because you're not necessarily researching things for a long time for those impromptu resolutions, I think it would honestly make you think more as a debater too and really try to get some different types of arguments out as well because can you imagine getting a resolution about maybe australia or something and the one thing you know about australia is that it's a free market sort of system and then it's like it kind of in the middle of nowhere <laughs> like you, there's not much that you could do with that but if you again if you're well versed in these current events areas you might be able to um, pull something together i don't know if you've ever done this experiment but uh the way you just phrased that made me think of this the um uh, Saying that Australia is in the middle of nowhere is a very uh, American-centric perspective. Exactly. So I don't know if you've ever, have you ever done the experiment where you kind of like look at a globe that was made from a different part of the world or look at a map made in a different part of the world? No. Because all the maps that are made in either uh, North America or Europe, they're made, they're laid out in a Mercatus framework where, the, uh, where Europe and America is in the center. And everything else is to the right or the left. You've seen these like wall maps. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like so not like a globe, but a map. right? Like an actual map that we'd hang on the wall here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like it's, yeah, but it's got like it's got uh, it's got our part of the world like smack dab in the exactly, center. Exactly. Yeah. Well, if you're from Australia or from China, they see themselves as the center of the world. So, so there, so, Australia is in the middle, and then all the rest of the stuff is on. the I don't sides. know. I'm, I'm not sure about Australia. I know China certainly for many years they they called themselves they had the name of their, their country as the Middle Kingdom. <laughs> Literally, not like vertical, but horizontal, the middle, like everything else is around China. 
Where we would look at China and say, wait a minute, that's the Far East, whereas the Chinese would look at that and say, it's the China-centric model. Exactly. So everywhere else tends to see themselves, everywhere, each group tends to see themselves at the center. So if you're going to like think about it from, well, how does Australia see it? What if Australia was the center of the globe and everything else was kind of oriented around This little Australia? haven in the center almost. Exactly. Yeah, so... These impromptu resolutions I really like. I, you know I'm not much of a extremely heavy research. Like, I'll build a case off of research, but it takes me a long time. It takes a lot of the pressure off if I can read the news every day and, like, be creative with the way I construct these arguments. Well, let's get to some let, – let, let's just see what you, what you think of these. All right. Um, I, I pulled up a document. There's a uh, website that pulled together some world school motions from across the years. I'm looking at a uh, – these are from uh, Ethan Pick a Year between – uh, 1998 and 2013. 2002. 2002. Okay, so 2002, the World School Tournament was held in... All right, we're in Singapore, which is fitting. With nice. With all the okay. stuff happening in that part of the world right now. Okay, so this first one is a prepared resolution. Okay. So it reads, this house believes that professionalism has ruined the Olympic Games. Well... That's definitely warrants a prepared resolution, right? Because I can see people needing more statistics for that kind of thing. And here, give me a non-prepared one. See if it, it, there's a pattern that we see here. This house believes that politicians should only be allowed to serve in office for a limited period of see, time. See, that's more general, right? Mm-hmm. So for that type of thing, there's a lot of general types of logical, I guess you could say, arguments you can make about term limits, and even examples, like popular examples you could pull on from before, but professionalism has ruined the Olympic Games is a more recent sort, or at least for that time, a more recent resolution that you would need something to base that off. Yeah, you can't you just go off need some, You'd need some examples. You want to know who are the professional athletes who were competing in that context and so on. Now that would, that would really, that, that makes sense to me. Okay. Um, another one, this house will maintain United States military bases in Asia. Okay, that's prepared or unprepared? That's prepared. That makes sense because there's probably some conflict going around with that. And I mean, I can imagine. Yep. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, the, here's another unprepared one. This house believes that low taxes are preferable to extensive government services. See, because that's not even based on any particular country. It's just right. a general principle again. And it's, we're going to to get there. And I, I could see a lot of political philosophy coming into that, really, about the whether or not um, government should provide services and rather do low taxes so that you have a low go- low expense low expenses from the government's end but really put a lot more of the burden of self care on the populace yeah and with that type of resolution like it just shows you how well read you truly need to be because you can make a case like a really general case mm-hmm. for that if you're not well read no political philosophy mm-hmm. is going to make it into there no you know historical examples right. again like all of that type of thing right uh, let's see here's another prepared one that actually also seems to me uh, pretty broad this house believes that free trade is the way forward. Mm, yeah, I mean, I'll... I can see that going both ways. I really have no... I'm, yeah, I've, I've I'm... done a prepared one for that, and I haven't necessarily done an unprepared one, but there's a lot... Of, I think you could take it as general as you need to for mm-hmm. that type of thing. Uh, we've got this house believes gambling of all forms should be illegal. This house supports missile defense. Is this, that one prepared? The missile. Uh, defense? The missile defense is prepared, and the other one was unprepared. Correct. So I can. I'm not like looking at these as you're reading them. Like yeah. for all those listeners, this is. I see this pattern. Like it's not just yeah. like, watching them do it. So uh, this this one is fitting what the NSDA manual suggests that in fact mm-hmm. uh, your half of the rounds that are held are prepared. The octofinals, quarterfinals, and semifinals are all unprepared. And then the final round is prepared. So in this year, the octofinal round was this house will ban genetic screening. Unprepared? Unprepared. Oh, I cannot see that as an unprepared type of... You would have to know That's an ethical sort of thing, right? Yeah. Like that's, I mean, it, go full ethics if you can't prepare stats on that kind of thing. But even then, I, I would have nothing. Oh, uh, one thing that we probably should have mentioned earlier is that uh, the NSDA... The NSDA uh, explains that you, you can't have cards or, or heavy research for this, even well, for I the mean, prepared ones. That's part of the fun. Yeah, you know? it, it's still about kind of the general approach to argumentation. Uh, this house supports the international trading of pollution permits. That's unprepared. unprepared. Uh, I mean, well, these are getting harder unprepared. I, like, I, yeah, I mean, but this, is, go, this is quarterfinals at a national, at a, at a, uh, an international That seems to be tournament. rewarding people who are extremely well-read. Like, the more right. well-read you are, the more rewarded you are as you uh, go up. This house will compromise civil liberties in the interest of security. 
what is this house thinking? Man, this house is, uh, <laughs> this house is on something else. <laughs> well, the final round is prepared. So you do get to, everybody can prepare. Was that the final round? No, that was, that was uh, semifinals. Final round is prepared. This house believes that the media has become too powerful. I like that. That's, That's uh, final round. Yeah. That would be such a cool final debate to watch. I, I think it would yeah, be. Yeah, that would be awesome. How long does a Rose School debate last? So I added this up last week. The three constructives on each side at eight minutes apiece. That's 24. That's 48 minutes. And then both sides get a rebuttal speech. I think it's six minutes. One three. rebuttal. Um, let me find that real quick. Okay. Uh... It's prelims, alters, draw, yeah, motions. Yeah, that goes on the previous page. Timing of speeches. Okay. Sub, those, okay. So those are the substantive speeches. So there are three substantive speeches by each team that are eight minutes long. I'm trying to figure out how many reply speeches they get. Uh, yeah, no, they get one reply speech each. So that's 24, 48, and now 56 minutes. And then, uh, there's got to be some sort of closing speech or something. I would think. Mm. Okay, I'm seeing that another final thing on the like from the 2003. This house end would end the war on drugs. Let me see more of these. These um, you want to let's round. run through the final round ones? Yeah, so I'll read those okay. while you like look at that. Piece All right, that sounds so, good. This house. Wait, what does THBT stand for? This house believes that. This house believes that Turkey is better off outside the EU. This house regrets South Africa's decision to use the Truth and Reconciliation Commission rather than prosecuting perpetrators of crimes committed under apartheid. Aperth apartheid. Apartheid. Yep, I need to do my research. I'm not yep. a well-read individual yep. there. That's that whole uh, um, very strict division between white and black uh, and society in South Africa. We okay. talked about that one before, I think. This house believes that autocracy is doomed in the age of Facebook. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are great. And, yeah, I like the Singapore one a lot. The, this house believes that the media has become too powerful. Keep in mind that the media in 2002 is a lot different than the media in 2019. So imagine True having that same, debate, that same debate today. I, uh, Ethan, as far as I can tell, uh, there are, I'm trying to, I'm, I am unclear as to how many, the first or second speaker for each team gives a reply speech. Not the third, so the third speaker is not doing Well, that. the first or second, so it sounds like each team gets three substantive speeches, and then each team gets one reply speech. So most of the replying is probably done by interjecting in those original yep, speeches. and or using that as part of where each substantive speech needs to both advance the argument and respond to the other arguments that have been brought by the opposite by the other team. And the other team can stand up with both a question or a statement, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And yep. they're limited to like 15 seconds or something, or advised not to go above a certain amount. And there's, uh, oh wait, let's talk about protected time. Oh, yeah. Yep. Where the first full minute of a substantive speech, that's one of those constructives, those three yep. eight-minute speeches, those are the substantive speeches, and the last full minute of a substantive speech are considered protected time. So you cannot interject or have a point of information in that time period. Now, this is important. I saw this a lot in the video, and I didn't understand what it was. The speaker may choose to accept a point of information or reject or wave down a point of information. So I, th I think there's times where that would look good and times where that would look bad. Because if your opponent's just be or opposition's just being annoying, just go ahead and reject them. But if they're like, if it could look bad if you're just trying not to answer a question. I, I think so. In the video we watched, I think uh, Savannah was ke keeping count, and both sides turned down 17 different attempts to interject a point of information. Wow. They each accepted one. One? But it looked to me like they were not confident enough in their own position to accept the question. And that could either be a strategic world school thing we're not informed of because we've never done it, or it could just be that those people were relatively unprepared to answer those questions. Or right. Both. Now, uh, one other thing I probably should say, and we, we're probably pretty close to wrap this, this episode up, yep. uh, is that um, I, I think there are more and more American teams that are moving to incorporate World School into their debate repertoire. Uh, I know the NSDA, both at district tournaments and at their national tournament, is including a World School component. Last year at the National Debate Coach Association meeting in New Jersey, there was one there was one coach who uh, gave a presentation on world school format, 
And now the, the schools that are doing this, none of them, as far as I know, with the possible exception of Durham Academy, none of them are in our area. They're, they're, uh, there are schools that do this in California. Texas, there was one, I'm sure. I'm sure there's yeah. plenty in Texas. There's a couple in Utah. <laughs> there's, there's, they're, they're not near us. I'm but... not surprised at all that they're starting to talk about this because I love a good LD debate. But I don't like canned arguments. And by the time you filter down through all of those rounds and public forum, LD, and all these other styles, you will get to canned arguments. There's those two staples that you need to use, a possible third argument, and there's always that one kid that has this massive twist on the resolution that just never makes it through. (laughs) Or rarely makes it through. So that's pretty relatable for anyone who's been through that. But World School is not like that. One, you get to more social issues. So you get a ton of current events type of thing and less of those classic types of debates that LD will focus on. You know, we filter through that civil disobedience one every year for novice. Right. So World School is kind of, I would describe it as refreshing. And you get a new, more recent topic every year. And half of them are impromptu, so you don't even need to stress about necessarily intentionally preparing for those. And I don't know. I'm I'm in favor of this format. I like to try it out. I'm excited. Oh, a couple of those more socially oriented ones that just, the ones we read were very economic. Yeah, let's get let's do some of those. Um, so we've got oh my my goodness, this was in 1999 in London. This house fears the millennium. Uh, defining fear would be really. Oh no, that's not the fun word here. The fun word here is millennium. I kind of like. This is I don't 1999. Know. Um, I, you were, you weren't alive in 1999, were you? No, I was oh, not. Okay, so in 1999, the big fear was that this thing called Y2K. There were a whole. You, have you never heard of this? No. Oh my goodness, I'm feeling very old on this show right now. I'm feeling relatively young on this show. No, that, that's good. good. That's good. good. Well, Y2K was a a, a theory that uh, everything that had computer chips in it was ba- that was based on binary code. It uses ones and zeros. Oh yeah. What like happens a- when suddenly there's a two? in the year will that crash all computer code no, everywhere i've heard of this i didn't know it was called y2k but i and just literally, knew that like, computer, people were like oh the computers won't know what to do the world's ending that literally so literally my dad was he thought it was probably going to happen so we had what we called the y2k closet that was filled with <laughs> filled with what cans of tomato soup oh my what did you just because the computer shut down doesn't mean the world's shutting down oh wait well the economy and everything yes like, the economy and everything too would shut down well how do you think the economy ended. processed those twos when people like had 20 dollar deposits and stuff? <laughs> I'm not saying it made sense, but in 1999, <laughs> no one knew for sure if computers would work on January 1 2000. <laughs> Were you so, great for what? I can't even imagine like the world just <laughs> tensely waiting for that moment. I wish I was alive then. Now there is a different alternative you could have. You could take on this. The millennium could also refer to the thousand-year reign of Christ in between uh, after the rapture and before the uh, before the f- end of Revelation. So there's all kinds of fun definitional stuff you could do with the phrase or, millennium. Or honestly, just tons of different fears about the millennium that you could have. On a totally different note, uh, in 2001 in Johannesburg, one of the prepared resolutions was this house believes that gay couples should be allowed to adopt children. See, like very very socially oriented. You won't get any of that in LD or public forum for sure. Uh, back in 1994 in New Zealand, uh, on February 7th, uh, one resolution that was not prepared was this house believes that feminism is corrupting the family. See, I mean, I mean that, that would be fun. Ooh, we like, get some what? sparks fly on our we team if we, we tried that one. Yeah, I mean, we would. Uh, this house will make tobacco companies pay compensation to the individual. Pay no way. I've never even it's like, like. Is this a thing that well, people? I, mean, it, I, I I'm. This one's not a prepared resolution, uh, but it, it certainly. I mean, it, the argument there makes sense. It's the reparations argument. I mean, except yeah, it's on it's tobacco. tobacco. Yeah, with the the lung the lung damage. Is it, isn't it people's choice to? Like I'm not even going to do the debate. That's, I know, that's for I know. world. That is for world schoolers in 2002. We well, are, but in 2003 in Lima, Peru, this house will legalize prostitution. Is that saying like for the world or for Peru or like what is this house even? It's uh, just like it's this, a, this. This house is generally, and perhaps someone who knows better will write in at uh, what's the res at gmail dot com yeah, to there you go, inform right there. us. Uh, but uh, my understanding is that generally you would uh, you, you assume that the the round itself is the house. So we're talking about this house as so in the people can, who are debating plus the judge. So you could assume, or maybe you could change it up to say like, 
legalizing prostitution is a good choice or is that's what good to that, do? that's what they're doing, but okay. it's maintaining this traditional parliamentary structure make, I mean, of the resolution. Makes sense. There's I don't see a resolution on here that I would necessarily not feel good about arguing. Like the one about the um, one in Africa and like the Turkey one, I would definitely have no knowledge to bring. That Turkey, this house believes that Turkey should join the European Union. It, that was one, it was one above that, I think, but that's also another one. I'm not very well versed in that kind of thing. But um, I mean, again, for some of the prepared and unprepared ones, I've debated similar types of things that I think could transfer over as well. This house will legalize all drugs. See, we debated that. We debated that. Except one it was the United States. There was a this house, agent. This house believes that Holocaust denial should be a crime. There's so many good topics. There man. really are. I mean, this is a, it's a very fun list just to look at what what people have done for for all these years. Um, this house ex- would expand the permanent membership of the UN Security Council. I mean, there was a UN Security Council public was. forum resolution too. So there's definitely an overlap. Uh, this house believes that doctors should report evidence of marital abuse to the police. That was in Doha in 2010. Oh, wow. Uh, let's see. In uh, 2013, here's one we debated uh, in the club last year. This house believes that important decisions about children's health should be made by medical professionals and not their oh, parents. Oh, yeah. I do remember debating that. That was round one of 2013 prepared. Okay. Up oh, in Antalya. I'm not entirely sure. I think that's in Turkey, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, There's one in Cape Town. That's hmm. cool. That's really cool. This house will ban alcohol. Whoa. Didn't we try that out here in America? We did. It didn't go very well. Yeah. well didn't we, uh, <laughs> Dr. Selena say that every time someone tries to ban some sort of alcohol, like every country's had their thing with this and it never goes well? Uh, oh, wow. Here's an error. This will be very interesting. Unprepared. Uh, this house believes that gay rights organizations should out gay public figures. And the one right below that, this house supports 100% inheritance tax. Does that mean that the government gets all of the inheritance? Um, yes. Um. (laughs) (laughs) How about this one? This house believes the government should pay housewives and house husbands for their work. What? Like, if you stay at home, you're making the house, you're doing work, the government should pay you. Uh, because labor is worthy of being paid and people need money to live. That is a topic I would like to think about. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I have so, so many thoughts on both sides Indeed. of that. Uh, are we getting on a rant here, like just reading stuff? Because I'm, I'm interested, but I'm hoping the listeners are still interested. This too. house will allow prisoners to choose death over life sentence. Uh, that we, there are so many interesting that, topics. What? Who came up with that? That's crazy. I mean, I'm sure there was some proposal in some country that someone picked up on. That, uh, probably that so. Well, hopefully our listeners have enjoyed us at least thinking out loud on this show about the nature of world schools debate. And uh, we will be planning, uh, it's, we're recording this at the end of August, probably beginning in September when the NSDA releases one world school or a world schools packet each month. One of our episodes each month will be us uh, preparing a world schools resolution together on the show. And then hopefully another one will be us actually trying to test out a world school debate. At some point, we might need to recruit some help and uh, try and pr- do a practice rec- uh, debate, actually. That would be kind of fun. We, we should do a live stream, one. but with video, so we get the real full picture in there, like the Facebook one we did that yep, one time. Yep, we could do the Facebook Live. And uh, uh, Ethan, how can folks find us if they want to know about when we're doing something yeah, like that? Yeah, if you want to tune in, you should email us at whatstheres at gmail.com. That's W-H-A-T-S-T-H-E-R-E-S at gmail.com with any feedback, comments, or questions that you might have. If you want to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, or Reddit, you could do so at What's the Res underscore. And we also have a Facebook page, and that's What's the Res. And finally, you can also visit our website where we post all of our free content episodes. That's at www.whatstherez.com. Now, I should also mention while we're doing our closing stuff that we, uh, we do also have a whole separate channel of premium debates. We, we decided, uh, really, I guess um, this past May, that we, we really wanted to begin incorporating something we're calling Real Debates by Real People. Now, Ethan, at this point, is a semi-professional debater. Um, I, I don't know. We need to find uh, some club sponsorship or something, and uh, we go up that to a professional debater. But uh, uh, yeah. I, I'm a debate coach, and so. But what the uh, our premium debates are really bringing in other people who don't necessarily have a debate background, and then we're having them explore debate. We're recording those debates, and those are available on our.
our uh, premium channel. You can access those at whatstherez.podbean.com for $3 a month or $30 a slash year. Slash premium, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, whatstherez.podbean.com slash premium. Yes, that's the important go. distinction there. Yeah. Uh, I actually just recorded our uh, September episode last night. It's uh, it's quite a fun episode. I was debating as a friend of mine named Rachel Suffren, and uh, we were debating about uh, the res- resolved political hierarchy is an inherent part of society. And uh, she was on affirmative and uh, arguing that hierarchy is always there. I'm on neg, maintaining that equality is actually the original core of society. Uh, We got into a lot of fun. Rachel has a political science background, and uh, she did a a great job on the affirmative side. So if you want to do that, you want to hear that episode, you can check that out at whatstherez.podbean.com slash premium. And until next time, work hard, speak well, and seek the truth.